Now, when it comes to spending money given for ministry, we must be diligent in spending it on ministry. Now, I'm probably going to get into trouble for what I'm about to say today. So, uh, if I say something which offends you in any way, please contact me and let's talk. So, here we go. Frankly, it bothers the stuffings out of me to see the abuse which occurs with money which is given to ministry when it goes to things that are outside the scope of a repentful servant of Christ's needs. If you're joining us in going through the books of Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, today's reading is Ezra 7, verses 11 through 18, and I encourage you to read that passage. Well, Ezra 7, 14 through 18 says this, For as much as you are sent by the king and by his seven counselors to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem according to the law of your God, which is in your hand, and to bring the silver and gold which the king and his counselors have freely offered to God, whose dwelling is in Jerusalem, with all the silver and gold which you find in the whole province of Babylon, along with the free will offering of the people and of the priests who offered willingly for the house of their God, which is in Jerusalem. With this money, therefore, you shall diligently buy bulls and rams and lambs with their grain offerings and their drink offerings and offer them on the altar of the house of your God, which is in Jerusalem. Now, whatever seems good to you and to your brothers to do with the rest of the silver and gold, you may do that according to the will of your God. Now, I once asked a Greek Orthodox priest if the extravagances of many Orthodox churches were out of line with Christ's poverty, Matthew 8, 20. Now, this was before I began my walk with Christ, so I can be cut a little bit of slack here. He responded with two things. First, he related the story of the ointment placed on Christ's feet, John 12, 3. And then he said, when you come into a place, don't you want to see God's beauty displayed? And then he quoted Exodus 28, 2. You shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and beauty. And then he quoted Exodus 28, 40. For Aaron's sons, you shall make tunics. You shall also make sashes for them, and you shall make caps for them, for glory and for beauty. <laughs> and then he mentioned Exodus 25 through 27, telling me that it was the description of the tabernacle. Frankly, I was quietly put in my place. The decree which Ezra received specifically laid out some of the money and where it was to go. It was to go to direct ministry expenses. But then there was a second part of the statement. Ezra was to use the money in any way he wished, according to the will of God. Now, he wasn't able and wasn't supposed to go out and buy a gold-plated chariot to be parked in a three-chariot garage, which was attached to a 20,000-square-foot house with an indoor pool. It was to be used according to God's will. Now, all church workers are to be paid so that they might live a modest lifestyle. They are worthy of their wages, 1 Timothy 5.18. But they are not to be tied to material wealth. They are to be witnesses of modesty, 1 Timothy 3.3. They are to be paid so that they can serve effectively. Now, flaunting wealth so that people will give you more by promising wealth themselves breeds lust and selfishness in both the teacher and the taught. Ezra could have used the money in any way that God willed. We as believers are to use the money which God gives us in a way that glorifies Him, not ourselves and our lust. Mm -hmm.